Savage Finance. Because it's a jungle out there that wants your money. Here I will teach you how to manage the jungle and make it out. Welcome to another edition of Savage Finance. Today we're going to talk about how to handle your credit cards during a recession. Be sure to pay attention to this video. Be sure to watch it from beginning to end because I'm going to give you details that no one else is going to give you. Also, if this is your first time here, what I want you to do is go to the front of the channel and toggle down the video section and start watching these videos from the beginning up to today because each video has economic benefit that will help you. I'm your host, Glendon Cameron, a serial entrepreneur, giving you personal finance advice that your mom and dad never had. So with that, let's jump into it. Credit card companies have been through this in 2008. And here's one other thing. I'm going to give you a few classifications. The first classification is, are you a person that barely uses your credit cards? You guys are in the most danger. Second classification, you carry a balance. And the third classification, you use your cards heavily, but you pay it off before the end of each month. People in the third classification have nothing to worry about. You've demonstrated to the credit card companies that you can be responsible with the credit card and you have a vigorous payment history of paying your credit card off on time and you don't carry a balance. They're not worried about you and people in the third classification are really a small segment of the credit card market. The big issue is the first classification and the second classification. If you barely use your credit cards and you start to use them heavily, you run the risk of your credit card company shutting off your credit card or reducing your credit limit. Let me explain. The credit card companies have predictive analysis software. When I first got my Chase Sapphire credit card and I was using it quite a bit, I constantly was getting denied or blocked because I had not built up the spending patterns that I now have with Chase. So they were really on me. And the same thing with my American Express card. Your spending patterns dictate how the credit card companies are going to treat you during this recession. Once again, third classification, you're good to go. But the first two, you guys have to be very, very careful. If you're in the first classification and you start using your credit cards really heavily, they're probably gonna shut you down because they're gonna, know, they're, they're, they're gonna know some's amiss. And also, if you start having a balance on one credit card, let's say you use a credit card you've never used in years, you lost your job, you're putting everything on this credit card, and then end of the month, you make a minimum payment from another credit card. What potentially could happen to you is the other credit cards that you have, they have the ability to look at your credit report anytime that they want to. And they have this on the automated system where they scan your credit report and they're gonna like, whoa, this credit card went up to this and this person no doesn't normally do this. So your credit card spending behavior will not only alert the credit card that you have, it will alert the other credit card companies. And these other credit card companies may actually reduce your credit limits or just cut off your credit card. Chase and American Express have been on this for a few months. They've been having people do financial reviews and submit tax information. Because if you apply for these credit cards and your tax files don't indicate that you made that income, you could be running into some problems. One of the things that I want you guys to understand is you gotta be really careful if you're in classification number one and number two, because you two guys, you have the most chance of having your credit cards crammed down, your credit limits reduced, or your credit cards cut off. On this channel, I have information about you building an emergency fund. You should have two emergency funds, a short-term emergency fund and a long-term emergency fund, because there are many people who are baking on this credit, and this could potentially be there for you, but if this thing, the situation that we're going through gets as bad as I think we are, the credit card companies are gonna be really jumpy as a long tail cat in a room full of rocking chairs. They're gonna be hair triggered. They're gonna start doing crazy stuff. They're gonna start reducing or eliminating people's credit cards because they're gonna be very uncertain. And 
They've been through this before, so they know what's gonna happen, and they this predictive analysis software is so good that it can predict you're gonna get in trouble usually before you get in trouble. I'm gonna tell you how good predictive analysis software is. Target uses it for its consumer base, and Target's predictive analysis software is so good, it can predict when a woman is gonna become pregnant before she becomes pregnant. There was this case where this woman, a Target sent this guy's 16 year old daughter these coupons for pregnancy, prenatal vitamins, and the dad just went off. And later on, she found out she was pregnant. This is how good this software is. So what does one do? First of all, I have a video up here talking about things you should do in, in terms of dealing with your credit cards, but this is what I would do if I was in classification number one. Number one, I would continue to barely use my credit cards. I would operate on the cash back basis because if you start using these credit cards heavily without the repayment history behind it, you run the risk of being shut off. These are going to be some very dire and uncertain economic times. And the credit card companies are not going to want to carry the pay the bills for you. They're just not. If I was in classification number two, I would be really careful because you're already carrying the balance. They're already looking at you side-eyed and you run the risk of being shut off or crammed down. So one of the things I would do is I would start paying down those balances as quick as I could if I'm in the position. Going back to my video talking about what to do with the stimulus check, depending on where you are, your financial abilities, what's going on with you, this dictates how you're gonna handle this. But once again, at Savage Finance, we don't recommend ever carrying the balance. It's not gonna be good because essentially, if you are carrying the balance, and let's say you have $80,000 worth of open credit lines and you got $40,000 balance, what these credit card companies will do will cram down your credit limits to that $40,000 balance, which will make you look like you maxed out and will literally crash your credit score, which will make it impossible for you to get any new or more credit until you pay this balance off. And this is where there are many people during this pandemic, there are many people who are economically fragile, who are living on credit, who don't have cash anywhere, and this is going to be a problem down the road. So how do we deal with this? First thing you do, if you have really good credit, I would call up all of my credit card companies and ask this question, could I get a credit limit increase and do you do a hard or soft pull? If they do a soft pull, go ahead, get the credit limit increase with them because you would call up all of them and all of the ones you can get your credit limit increase with a soft pull, you would do those first. And then the ones who require hard pull, you would do them last. You will max out your credit because if you do, if they reduce your credit, they're only gonna reduce it by a percentage. And since you've already imp reduced, improved, increased your credit lines, then you may not be suffering. Uh, the second thing I would do is figure out a way to earn more money so I don't have to use credit. I believe you should have great credit. I believe you should make more money. I believe you should operate on cash. I think you need both. But the thing is, in these times, you gotta figure out a way where you can make more money so you don't have to use these credit cards because worst case scenario, you lose your job, you start living on credit, then you file bankruptcy. That's the worst case scenario that's going to happen in the, in the coming months of people who just, they lost their job, they couldn't find another job. They used their credit cards to live on, to buy food, to pay bills, and then their credit was exhausted, they didn't find a job, then the credit card companies are looking at them and they're coming for them, they're filing bankruptcy, then their credit's ruined for seven to 10 years. Don't be in that situation. If you are a student of my other channel, Hustlers Kung Fu, you shouldn't be in that situation. You should have a well-funded emergency fund. And I'm not trying to preach down to you guys because I think we're in times where people need the truth, where people need to understand what's gonna happen because there are many people who have a large credit lines and they're banking on these credit lines to be there when they really need them. And more than likely, if you don't have a robust spending pattern, like I do, one year I got 500,000 points on my Chase Sapphire card because I spent that much. So for Chase, I'm in the category of a heavy spender, but I have spent a lot and I've paid off a lot. 
I don't have to worry about my credit lines being crammed down. With Chase, American Express, which I don't use that much, potentially, because it's, it's gonna, they're gonna look at your behavior. And if you radically adjust your behavior, they're gonna know what's up. So once again, I want you guys to be safe. I want you guys to be good. But this is how you handle your credit during the recession. And if you are in category number three, you can even get more credit in the recession. You'll be the first people they'll say yes to. If you're category number two, it's gonna be a challenge. Category number one, potentially you could get more credit. I would suggest that you do get more credit because you wanna have super credit. You know, go to, I have a video on there, how to develop super credit that will tell you all of the ways to do that. And this is one of the safeguards to keep you solvent in these uncertain times. We're going to go through it. And I want you guys to understand that this is going to be a global reset. And many of the things that we take for granted, many of the things that we're doing, we're gonna to start to really appreciate those things in the coming months. So be really careful with your credit cards. Like if you're number three heavy spender, you can continue to spend, use your credit cards the way that you want to, you're gonna be fine. But classification number one and two, you run a great risk by altering your credit card behavior. And another thing you should do, you should be debt free. That would be the goal. That's one of my goals for each and every one of you to be debt free, living a debt free lifestyle and using credit cards as a convenience, not an extension of lifestyle or cash, which is what many people have done. And these are the first people to get into trouble with credit cards. These are the first people that Dave Ramsey be yelling at because they're using credit cards incorrectly. They're using them as an extension of cash versus convenience because if you use a credit card, you should be able to pay it off at the end of the month or do what I do. I use my credit card like a debit card and I pay my credit card off several times per month. I'll use it and just like, you know, at the end of the day, I'll go in my account and pay it off and use it as a debit card. And having this hard and fast rule has kept me out of trouble because if I don't have the money, I don't use the credit card. So I can't get in trouble. And it's a level of discipline that you must train yourself because credit is not free money. It's not extra money. It's not a windfall. Credit is a convenient, it's a great tool. You can use it in future uh, videos coming up. Make sure you subscribe and watch the videos, like and leave a comment. I'm gonna talk about how to play the credit card game. But since this channel is really new, and I want you guys to get a foundational financial education because this is everything that your house, your financial house is going to be built on. And if you have a good economic financial foundation, then as you build your financial house, it's going to be rock solid. It's going to be strong. But if you like, let me give you an example. The people who don't have an emergency fund short term or long term, the people have no cash in the bank, but who, but who are investing in the stock market. What's gonna to happen to these people is once they run into an economic problem, they're gonna to have to sell these stocks probably at the worst possible time, i.e. a loss, to get that money to handle their situation because they don't have an emergency fund. This is what happens when you build your financial house incorrectly. Did you find yourself going back and forth, back and forth? Here's a gain, here's a loss, here's a gain, here's a loss, versus a long-term continuous level of gains. That's how you properly build your financial house. And credit cards could be part of that. We will talk about that. Well, we'll talk about, you know, advanced credit card techniques in upcoming videos. So be sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and then watch this next video that should be right here. This is Glendon Cameron, your host of Savage Finance, giving the personal finance that your mom and dad never had. I will see you in the next episode.